It's 2015 model sell-off at Franklin Toyota. Now is your best time to buy because every 2015 model must be sold. At Franklin Toyota, save up to $5,000 off the new Prius or get zero APR for 72 months. Find it today at Franklin Toyota in Statesboro. On this week's show, Tyson Summers named the Eagle head football coach. We'll discuss the hire and the new additions to Coach Summers' staff. All that and some basketball highlights as well as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, been a little bit of news since the last time we, uh, we, we were together on this set. Now, we did go up for the GoDaddy Bowl. Pleasantly surprised not only by the crowd that showed up, but the product on the field for Georgia Southern coming back from a deficit to wipe the floor with Bowling Green in the victory. Before that, we knew the head coach had been announced as Tyson Summers from Colorado State. Their defensive coordinator was coming here, had a brief cup of coffee with the Eagles back in the season that not pe many people want to remember in 2006. Since then, we had to have the press conference we know a little bit more about him. We also know a little bit more about the staff that he's putting in place, although nothing official has been uh, released from Georgia Southern, and we know the way that the uh, human resources things work there. It could be another month before it's official who all has been uh, hired. Your thoughts right now on Tyson Summers hiring and where we are right now with the uh, staff getting put in place. Well, it did come a little bit out of left field. There were, there were a lot of names floating around immediately after Georgia Southern learned that Willie Fritz is on his way to Tulane. And I, I think that a lot of those uh, names that were originally heard did get some phone calls, had some face-to-face -face time with uh, athletic director Tom Kleinline. But in the end, it's a guy whose name didn't really surface until 24, 48 hours before the actual announcement. Uh, Tyson Summers is very similar to the way that Willie Fritz was hired. There were a, a lot of names bouncing around, and all of a sudden, a, a day or two same, before, and a lot of the same, a names. lot of the same <laughs> names, and, and all of a sudden, a, a day before everybody thinks an announcement's going to be made, there's this dark horse candidate back then from Texas, now from Colorado. So. Uh, Tom Kleinman definitely not afraid to make it a national search as he said it was going to be. Uh, Tyson Summers in the press conference. Of course, everybody always wins the press conference when you're the new guy in town, but saying all the right things, uh, trying to continue what Georgia Southern's been building the last couple of years in FBS. One Coach Summers did say that the offense that Georgia Southern's built over the last couple of years, not really like anything else that we see in FBS, and he intends to keep it, if not the same, at least similar. All right, well, that's the words we've heard at the press conference. Now, when you look at David Dean, Valdosta State's head coach, and another blast from the past, Rance Gillespie, who is on Chris Hatcher's staff, uh, are supposedly going to be co-offensive coordinators. Let's go with that right now. I think you mentioned it, you know, the winning the press conference is not very hard to do. I, I think even Brian Van Gorder had won the press conference, although I think a lot of people may have been a little disappointed to hear that there is no option, which was the, the, the big thing at the time. Now you have Tyson Summers coming in saying the right things, that the offense will stay pretty much the way it is, but you bring in a couple of guys that aren't really known, at least if you think about when Hatcher was here for running the offense that we've run the past few years. Well, you look at any coach and everybody's got their system, their way of wanting to do things, but good coaches will find a way to make the talent that they have work for them. And right now, I know that Coach Summers, he says that uh, as good as the option is, as effective as it is, it'll be more effective when the Eagles can throw the ball. I think even the most diehard traditional option fans will agree with that. This year, just not enough through the air for the Eagles to have quite the season that they were hoping for. You bring in some guys that know how to throw the ball around, maybe get a quarterback who can throw the ball around a little more. But until then, look what you've got. You've got two quarterbacks returning with two years of experience in this gun option attack. You've got the entire backfield coming back, one or two receivers, a couple of offensive linemen. So everything's pretty much set up. The cupboard is stocked. It's just a matter of how they want to point those X's and O's, I think we'll see a lot of the same stuff from the Eagle offense next year. These guys know the plays, they know the terminology, they'll have to tweak some things. Eventually this will look a little different, I would assume, but 
any coach who's made it to this level of coaching knows that you can't just come in and do your own thing. I think that we'll see a lot more option than maybe these coaches are known for at Valdosta State and Valdosta High now with Gillespie. But coach, I know it's been quite a whirlwind for you right now. Putting your staff together, how much of that was fun? How much of it was stressful? It was, uh, I think it was both. We got an opportunity to talk a lot of football with a lot of good coaches and uh, tried to be very diligent and detailed through the process of putting together our staff. Uh, really wanted, was looking for guys, uh, what I've talked about in the past, which is trying to find the best people we could find, uh, the best teachers and the best position coaches, and uh, trying to find all those things and then still be able to find the guys that fit our recruiting areas the best. Uh, we certainly wanted to have recruiters. We wanted to find guys that had won championships. We wanted to have guys that had been able to uh, to, to be at the college level. And uh, we certainly felt good and comfortable about finding some of the best high school coaches in the state as well and, uh, and trying to find the best recruiters we could because we felt like that was the lifeblood of our program. Are you worried at all about the recruits and, and keeping the ones that they had and maybe even bringing in some new guys? Sure. We, uh, well, I think anytime there's transition, that, that does bring a level of anxiety to everybody. You've got parents with questions. And uh, it is kind of an odd time as far as the calendar falls these days. You know. Uh, I was, uh, did, did our press conference on December 26th, and you don't get a chance to talk to those guys and meet them face to face, so the very earliest January 14th. So it does, it does take a lot of time. Uh, you're limited with your phone calls, you get one a week, and that's it. And so uh, between trying to, uh, to make sure that we're building our relationships with the recruiting base and with the parents, and making sure that George Southern is the right fit for them, and, uh, and making sure that they're the right fit for us as well. Was it tough at all to deal with limitations that come with financially, who you can bring and who, who you might want that maybe you can't afford? And things no, like that? I think at the end of the day, you're trying to find the right fit for here. You know, and uh, Georgia Southern's uh, tradition and their history talks about finding the best people and the best fit, and I certainly think we've done that. Was it important at all to bring people back that know Statesboro and know this area and maybe know Georgia Southern? I think so, but I, again, I think at the end of the day, you're looking for the best teachers, you're looking for the guys that have been in leadership positions, and, and guys that have won championships. That's what they've done here at Georgia Southern, that's what our history, that's what our pride is based on, and we wanted to find guys that were, had, had that in their background and had that in their past. Having been a defensive coordinator yourself, how important was that position and, and how hard was that choice? Uh, it's a, you know, it, it wasn't a hard one to be honest with you. Uh, Zoe is a guy that I've spent the better part of the last decade with. This will be our third school together that we've been at. And uh, I think anytime you're talking about two guys that have, uh, whether I was a coordinator, whether we were both position coaches, are really on the same page. And uh, a guy that knows how I want our room run, knows how our meetings need to be run, and knows our de defense inside and out, uh, I certainly think that it allows me to be able to bounce and be a, a truer head coach than a, a micromanaging defensive coach in that room. As far as the offense goes, you know Statesboro, you know what people wanted to know. We're going to run the ball. <laughs> We're going to run the ball. Uh, nothing's changed in that. Uh, what, what I've talked about the entire time of trying to keep as much continuity uh, as possible through the transition from a verbiage standpoint, a communication standpoint, all those things are going to stay the same. Uh, we are going to do what I've talked about, which is make a few minor adjustments here and there. Uh, we certainly want to have the ability to throw the ball. Um, and, and that's kind of where we're at with it. Again, we tried to go find the guys, uh, Rance Gillespie and David Dean, that have been in leadership positions, that have won championships, and we felt like we were the two best position coaches that we could hire. We certainly feel like uh, the development of each position, in particular the quarterback position, in particular the receiver position, were guys that we felt like the, net, the best hire needed to be. And uh, those two guys obviously have a ton of ties to the state of Georgia, and will do a fantastic job for us in recruiting. The offenses that each one have been running at Valdosta State and at Valdosta High School, are they similar? Sure. I think what, what happens to you is everybody says, well, they've, they've been this, they've been a, you know, an air raid, and, the, and what all that means out of kind of that tree, uh, you know, that started with, with Coach Mummy, went to Coach Leach, and, uh, and has trickled down. But that's really not what either one of those guys have been for the last couple of years. I think. Uh, even when you look back at Coach Dean and his national championship teams where they were really a running the ball team, 20 personnel. Uh, and I think the biggest example that you can have with Coach Gillespie is what he was able to do with Jason Foster. You know, a guy comes here, wins the Walter Payton Award, the run game stays the same, and, uh, and able to win a lot of games and continue to lead the team, the country in rushing. And uh, that's really the best example that I can give you. 
um, for what we're trying to do. Obviously, you know, everybody says, well, these are, this guy's the play caller, that guy's the play caller, the co-offensive coordinators. But at the end of the day, this is Georgia Southern's offense and this is my offense, and that's how we're going to keep it. Who will call play? We'll determine that at a later time. Notice that Valdosta State, they were almost 50-50 run pass, 27 touchdowns rushing, 28 touchdowns passing. Is that what you hope to get this offense into, or is it more what personnel you have? No, I think, uh, I think that you're always going to try to do your best job of, of, of making sure that you're giving yourself the best chance to win. The personnel certainly dictates that, uh, and what you can do and what you can do well is what dictates that. Uh, I feel like what we've been doing here uh, is going to give us the best chance to win in the immediate future and that's why we're going to stay with as much consistency as we can uh, with those pictures. Uh, you know, but we've got to be able to have answers. Uh, we're still going to be a run team and a run team first on offense. We're still going to be in the gun and we're going to be able to uh, run the option out of it. But we certainly want to be able to have answers when people are loading the box on us, when we're having a hard time getting our run game going. There are going to be times throughout the year, whether you like it or not, that the defense may not be perfect coming out the gate. Uh, we certainly want to be able to win in two-minute situations at the end of each half and at the end of each game. And to do that, we've got to be able to throw the ball with some, with some efficiency. How much video have you watched of Georgia Southern? And is that important between now and whenever of, of evaluating through the video? I think, it'll be, uh, I think it'll be really important as we continue to move forward. Uh, I have watched a ton of the offensive side of the ball, more so than the defensive. Uh, obviously feeling like that uh, with my background on defense and the special teams and, and trying to make sure that we had the correct hires and the correct staff on offense, that's where I've spent a lot of my time, to be honest with you. Will you do that on the practice field as well? Do you plan to spend more with the offense, defense, or just as it comes? I plan on being a, a big help to Coach Lunsford on the special teams. I think that's important for head coaches. Uh, and I certainly think it's a critical phase of what we're trying to do overall. Uh, but I, I plan on being in both uh, sides, both in meetings each day and on the practice field. Yes, sir. Is the recruiting the big thing right now, or is it? You know? It is because it's the immediate thing. Uh, obviously, getting to the first Wednesday in February and, and giving us an opportunity. We've got January 14th as the first opportunity for us to be out on the road, see these kids. Uh, January 15th, we have a number of official visitors coming in. So it's not only trying to make sure that the numbers that the prior staff had had of, you know, do we need to take five linemen, do we take four linemen, do we take another back, do we try to take another defensive back, those kind of things. Trying to make sure that those things are matched up through the day. Uh, obviously, little things like today, they're all at HR, you know, trying to get their paperwork done. So we're trying to get through the process of a lot of things in the new staff and a new hire, uh, but we're also trying to make sure that we're diligent throughout the day. and. Uh, and some of the guys I am familiar with and, and, and know me, a lot of the guys are not. So, uh, so we're working through both things as far as staff meeting goes. Uh, you know, our, our next immediate thing when those guys get back today is to go through our entire team and go through academics. The next thing is to go through injuries and making sure that we're doing the best thing for our current roster. All right, Michael, let's shift gears a little bit and head indoors to the basketball where the men and women basketball teams have some big games coming up in the conference. They're both in conference schedule from now on out. It's doubleheaders galore. Your thoughts on where the men and women are? Well, finally out of the break, all the out of conference action now done with tough schedules for both the, the men and the women so far. A lot of games away from home. Both of them have been struggling a little bit. I think that the women showing a lot of improvement from last year already just one win away from matching last year's uh, uh, win total. The men, Coach Mark Byington, he'll be the first one to say that he's scheduled about as tough as you could possibly schedule it. The record kind of reflects that. Both teams, a long road trip to begin with in conference play, going 0-2 in a Texas trip out to Texas State, UT Arlington. Both those tough teams on both sides. Now, a chance to finally come back home. Only two or three games each at home so far for these Eagles teams. Hopefully, uh, can get the ball rolling in conference play, maybe fatten up on some teams that look schedule-wise a little bit easier. All right, well, let's head out to Hannah Fieldhouse for Thursday's doubleheader. Coach Kip Drown leading his Lady Eagles into battle, the first of two at Hanner Fieldhouse as they host South Alabama. We move to second half action, the Eagles down by three, but Angel McGowan leading a comeback, first one three, then another, the Eagles up by three. The Jags answer with the three from Colby Davis in the corner tying things up, but Angel right back. Two more of her game-high 26 points 
Later, Trail English Lurry drives, stops, and pops. Nice bounce there. Patrice Butler later knocks down the jump shot right here. She finished with 13 points and eight rebounds. More from McGowan, another three. The Eagles with nine from behind the arc on the night, including this one from Alexis Sams. Eagles by eight, and finally it's Butler somehow managing to get this one to fall. She even has to crack a smile about it. The Eagles win 57-43. To the guys game we go. Georgia Southern looking for their first conference win of the year. Early on off the miss, the big man Monte Glenn showing the nice moves. Trouble was, there were plenty of misses and unaccounted for. The Eagles shooting only 26% from the field, 11% from the three-point range in the game. The Jags going an eight-point run right here. The dunk finishing things up. The Eagles with only eight total field goals in the first half. Here's a few. Tukey Brown, two of his 17. Ike Smith drives and hits the floater. More from Smith. The hoop and the foul. He'd finish with 20 points. Mike Hughes later driving in for two of his nine points in the game, cutting the lead to four. Jake Allsmiller with a rare non-three-point shot. This cuts the lead to two. But the Jags then go on an 11-2 run to end the first half. Kevin Williams with a couple of threes. He'd finish with a game-high 22. And the Eagles fall 64-58. to Another matchup coming up Saturday. Doubleheader at Hannerfield House against Troy. Well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.